to provide everyone with a biometric digital identity that works via a smartphone app. EOD creates a digital identity on a smartphone by capturing biometrics. It's then validated by using a government-level document such as a passport or a driving license, which it replaces for future transactions. EOD, a British startup, is trying to establish a global identity system that protects users from both identity theft and having their data collected and exploited. All personal data remains within the EOD ecosystem, where different elements, name, gender, date of birth etc., are encrypted and stored separately. Only the individual user can tie it all together. EOD, derived from your own trusted identity, requires a smartphone, and there are apps for both Apple iOS and Android. The potential audience is in the billions. EOD requires each user to create a digital identity. This involves providing biometric identifiers such as video and speech, plus an image of a government-backed identification document, such as a passport or a driving license. Yodi discards these after the ID has been created. Yodi's co-founder and CEO Robin Toombs says passport images are deleted after seven days. Users who have Android phones with NFC can read the chip in their digital passport. Toombs says Apple doesn't allow this at the moment. If a company wants to verify a user, it presents them with a QR code that they can read with the Yodi app. They can verify their Yodi ID by entering a five-digit PIN and, if necessary, by videoing themselves and by speaking random words displayed on the smartphone screen. If you're holding your smartphone in the usual way, the video is easily captured. The app just turns on the front-facing camera. Toombs says the system isn't completely foolproof because some people may have fake passports or fake driving licenses. However, it's more secure than alternatives such as database lookups based on names and addresses, electoral rolls, birthdays, mother's maiden names and similar pieces of information. One advantage for users is that they can verify their identities without divulging extra information. For example, if you proffer a driving license or passport to prove that you are over 18, you're revealing a lot of personal information, not just your date of birth. Another advantage is that people can use a single Yodi ID for multiple purposes, such local clubs, supermarkets, banks, or whatever. It even works as a peer-to-peer -peer system that you could use when meeting people you don't know. Also, of course, Yodi works online, globally. It can be used as a website logon and includes a password manager. Yodi doesn't need to collect or sell personal information or advertising space because it makes money by charging companies for its ID service. We have a mature business model, says Tooms. Most businesses already pay to do background checks, where they might only get 80% matches. That's not as good as being able to offer a 100% match, and we're cheaper than a database match. Obviously, there's a chicken and egg problem with getting a service like Yodi off the ground. Most users won't make the effort to set up a digital identity on Yodi if they don't need one, and most companies won't ask for a Yodi if none of their users have them. That problem would be solved almost instantly if, say, Facebook or a large government department mandated Yodi. Being adopted by a bank or a national supermarket chain, which is possible, if NCR backs the system, would be a major breakthrough. Even Twitter would be a great step forward, and Twitter desperately needs a system like Yodi. As it is, verified users may be asked for passport or driving license images to prove their IDs. At the moment, Yodi is working with a couple of dozen early adopters. These include the NSPCC, the UK's national children's charity, NCR, Reed, a large recruitment agency, and Deltic, the UK's largest nightclub chain. People who use the free ads website to buy and sell things can also use Yodi to confirm their IDs and get a trusted member badge. That approach would work on eBay, Gumtree or Craigslist, and also on online dating sites. Whether Yodi will take off is anyone's guess, but the increase in identity theft suggests there's a market need. Yodi says it has had 140,000 downloads so far 
with about 95,000 of those being UK users. The company was founded in 2014 and now has about 180 staff, mostly in London. Yoti aims to have more than a million users by summer 2018, expanding into India, the US and Europe. The service can already accept passports from 140 countries.